Hello there YouTube, and with it, most of the civilized world. This is Koraksu, coming to you with another video. And in this video, I would like to go over some of the programs that I use when making maps. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm not going to be talking about servers here. Server providers are something entirely different, even though some of these um, altering things need a server to run. Anyway, there is two main types, if you ask me. Ones that are in-game and ones that are not in-game or exterior. In-game, for example, you have World Edit. World Edit is one of the most known things out there, probably. It is ideal for making structures and things that look structured or bad or stuff. Um, it allows you to copy like areas and mirror them and then place them somewhere else and flip them and do a whole myriad of things that are concerned with like copy and pasting and like, altering them a little bit. You can uh, easily replace blocks as well, like with certain percentages and all even. Um, it remembers brushes, like you can like bind certain brushes to stuff. Uh, for example, like a ball brush, which basically like spawns a huge ball made of blocks. Uh, that's just a simple example, but there's obviously much, much more. Um, and even if you like remove the, the the item from your inventory, you can just take it out of the inventory again, and then you basically have the same brush until you remove that brush via a command. Uh, you can also easily move through things, and that's something that I almost always use even in any other like, situation it's just you have a compass and if you click on, on one side you move to the place that you looked at when you clicked if it's not too far away and otherwise if you uh, right click you can go through walls which is very very useful except like for example if you trap yourself in the middle of rock like one click and you're out done um, it is however not good for terrain or for organics. That is because um, whilst it does have brushes and all, um, the smoothing for these brushes is absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. But, good thing for us, there is another program that completely takes care of that. That program is called Voxel Sniper. Fossil Sniper is ideal for organics and terrain, <laughs> contrary to world edit, but not as good for structures at all, in fact. Um, there is many, many ways you can alter large numbers of blocks with Fossil Sniper. Um, for example, the arrow and, and the gunpowder uh, are the two items that are used in this, let's say, mod or plugin, whatever you prefer to call it, um, and they do the opposite of each other. If you, for example, say that it has to rise the terrain, it will rise it with the arrow, but if you use gunpowder, it will lower the terrain. So basically you have always like two brushes at the same time, but um, if you want to like change the, the, the brush, for example, instead of a rise terrain to a change stone to colored blocks, um, colored clay blocks um, brush, yeah, you're gonna have to completely change that, so if you want to go raise again, you have to type a command. But really, it's not that hard if you get the hang of it. Um, it is, however, also not fit for minute detailing. Like, it's it's more for the general areas, not per se for you know, like the details, basically, than the generators. Um, I'm, I just group these together as generators. They basically uh, require an internet connection, you, mostly. Uh, there are those that you can use offline or whatever. I use these as um, altering things as well because it's very easy to just like make redstone commands or stuff that otherwise you would be typing and mistyping probably and figuring out what's the error in here and blah blah. Basically, huge time saver. Just use a generator of the internet. There's a lot of those out there. For example, like ones that generate books and stuff even, or banners, or whatever that you want. Basically, it's just super, super easy to make things with generators. Okay, on to the exterior ones. One that mostly everybody knows, probably, but not everybody, like World Edit is more known, MC Edit. MC Edit is an external editor. Basically, it does not require you to run Minecraft. In fact, actually, MC Edit is one of those editors that can actually 
be a risk if you run it simultaneously with Minecraft. Is if you run the world in Minecraft whilst also re running it in MC Edit and you save it on either side, it's possible for it to corrupt worlds. So be careful with it to not have Minecraft open. It happened to me a few times. Not nice. It's also a bit difficult to maneuver in and the brushes are very, very limited. Like in World Edit, you can also have brushes and stuff, but it's a bit better, but yeah. Still use Foxhole Sniper if you ask me. It is however fit for huge operations. Like in game you can only do so much before your server crashes or your Minecraft or, just, or stuff just completely blocks. In MC Edit this usually is not the case unless you make edits of millions, no even billions of blocks. Like MC Edit can run huge, huge things. That's why I usually use it uh, when I go into like world altering mode. For example, if I want to take water out of the entire world. You can do that with Foxel Sniper or World Edit, but it will totally take you a while. Um, in MC Edit though, pretty easy of course. It's only in, unloaded, uh, only in loaded chunks, like, like not in chunks that you never have popped up yet. Anyway, um, you can also easily move builds and things across worlds via schematics. This is something that also uh, is supported by world edit and stuff, but you need multiple worlds then on the server and personally I find it a bit clunky. MC edit, fast and easy, boom. It also has custom filters um, and there's an ever-growing amount of them that let you alter stuff uh, more than vanilla probably can. It, like, easily makes um, spawners, for example. Though, of course, there's multiple ways to do everything, basically, when it comes to mapping. Good. After MC Edit, I'll go into Binvox a little bit. Now, Binvox, this is also called obg 2 mc um, is a 3D model to, to a schematic um, converter. Basically, it's very, very useful if, and only if, you are a somewhat experienced 3D modeler and you have a 3D program which you can make 3D files with. Uh, basically it's the same as like any game 3D file for example or like, like any 3D file mostly. As long as it is in OBG format but I can go into this in a more specific video sometime in the future. Um, anyway if you have that you can basically make yourself an organic put it through Binvox and boom, it's in a schematic that you can then use in MC Edit or World Edit or whatever to place in your world. However, there is a few problems with it still. Um, it is somewhat buggy, there is like a maximum size on things. Um, schematics almost always need to be rotated around and stuff and they mostly are not the size that you need. So you can have to run it through the program um, like a few times. But in general, it can be a humongous time saver. So Binvox is definitely one of the things that I regularly use. But beware, do not steal object files. Just, just make them yourself, because if you steal object files, you're not really making it. Like, I don't get why you would do it. Um, basically, make, make your own stuff. And it's fine to use any program you want, as long as the general thing comes from you. In my opinion. Um, then there is still NBT Edit. Um, NBT Edit is the last one I'll talk about in this video. Um, it is one of the most difficult ones, I suppose. Um, it allows you to color world names, for example. Like, in if you just make a world, it always is white in your title screen, but you can change it with MBT edit for example. There's probably like a myriad of other programs that do this. I'm not claiming 100% knowledge on this, but I know that I do it with MBT edit. MBT edit also allows you extreme detailed control over every item and entity in like a map that you open. It doesn't matter which one, you can make like new lore, you can color every single like every single uh, letter a different color if you would like so. Um, but, <laughs> this comes with a huge, huge, huge but. It can very easily corrupt your world. It's not very easy to use, in my opinion, um, and it is very, very risky, because if you do one thing wrong, it's very well possible that you never get your world back. 
so back up your worlds. Um, but with that said, I think that I've mostly said everything I wanted in this video. If I've missed something or you want to see something else or stuff, leave me the things in the quest that the question? Yes, leave me the things in the description and I will see you another time. Bye bye.